Alright, let's take a look at that. So Enable 3D is a wrapper library for 3.js and MOJS. And that means you can do 3D stuff with physics in your browser. It is like a JavaScript 3D engine and has a simple approach on creating 3D stuff. Let's take a look at some of those examples. And as you can see, there are quite a lot of examples. So let's just take a look at the water example. And as you can see, you can render water. Look at that water. Or let's take a look at the third person camera example. And that's looking really cool. Or maybe the first person shooter example. That's awesome, cool. Or let's take a look at the Wrecking Ball example. In this video I'm focusing on 3D physics, so let's try it out. You can check out a template project on GitHub to bootstrap your own 3D project. You write the code in TypeScript and build it with Webpack, so make sure you have the Node Package Manager installed and ready. So I have grabbed the template project. Take a look at the index TypeScript file. This is the file where your code goes. Also take a look at the index.html file. It is referencing a JavaScript file. This JavaScript file will be available after the TypeScript file has been compiled. Also note that there is this MO folder. This folder contains the MOJS physics library. So before we start, I delete all the content of the TypeScript file because it seems the content is outdated. At first I am installing the enable3d library. After that I am installing all other dependencies. And after that I am starting the web application. And just like that I have a blank white page, but that will change soon. And moving on to creating the first 3D scene. I can do that by first importing a class from the enable3d module. And I can do that by typing import from enable3d and I import the scene 3D. And then I need to create a class and it is extending the scene 3D class. And then I overwrite a few methods. I overwrite the init method and also the create method. And then I need to bootstrap the scene. At first I create a configuration. And I add the property scenes. It is an array of scenes and I put my physics scene there. And then I call the physics loader. At first I provide the path to the MOJS library. And then I provide the lambda to create the new project. New project. And I provide the configuration. And after saving you see I have a black screen. That's the 3D canvas. Let me add a few more configuration properties. I would like to have anti-aliases. So within the 3D scene, so within the enable 3D scene, you have access to the renderer, the camera, the scene, and the MOJS physics manager. Here in the init function, I did some basic renderer setup. Within the create function, you can add and create your 3D objects. Let us call this method here, this warp speed. And after saving, you see that you have a basic 3D scene. You have a skybox, you have lights, you have a floor, and you have orbital controls. And now let me change the camera position. This camera position set 13, 10, 13. And now let us try something else. You can also call this method here. Have some fun. And now you know what's happening. It is just basically spawning random 3D objects. We can create basic 3D objects very easy. Let me create at first a box. I define a variable box and I type this 
physics add and box and with this add box method it will create a 3d box and also a box physic body i can provide position and size and i can also provide the material i can say i would like to have a fong material and i would like to have the color to be green So just like that, I have a box here. And let me create also a sphere. So I create a variable named sphere. And I type this physics add sphere. And I would like to change the position to be y5 and z minus 3. And I would like to have the material to be Lambert and with the color yellow. So right there I have a yellow sphere. And also I would like to create a torus. And again it's very easy. I just use add torus method. I change the position to y1, z3. I change the tube size to 0.2. And I change the radial segments to have more polygons to 16. And tubular segments also 16. And I would like to have the Lambert material with the color orange. So when you reload the page and you take a look at the torus, you see that the torus is falling down. And that means all basic 3D shapes have already physics. And now I would like to enable the debug mode for physics. Let me save that and take a look. And what you now see is that every 3D object has some kind of red mesh around it. This is the physics body. It is usually invisible and you see it only in the debug mode. You can also change the physical attributes of the objects. For example, let's take the sphere. And I say body and I can say set bounciness. And I would like to set the bounciness to 0.6 and let's see how it looks like. And you now see that the ball is bouncing around. If you change the bounciness value to 1, then you get, a, then you get an endless bouncing. Just like that. If you set the bounciness value to a greater value than 1, then the ball will bounce higher and higher. For example like this. It jumps higher and higher each time. You can also apply forces to the objects. Again, let's take a look at the sphere. And let's say body, apply force on the x-axis. And I would like to apply a force on 0 0.7. And you see the sphere is being pushed towards the x-axis. Let me set a higher value, like 4, just like that. So let me apply a force on the torus. You can also load 3D objects in GLTF format. Enable 3D is a wrapper for 3GS. You can also use all 3GS features. Let me import 3GS here. Also I have imported this duck.glb file. This is a binary GLTF file of a duck. I would like to load the duck in the scene and apply physics to it. So let me use the GLTF loader of 3GS. I say new GLTF loader. And I say load async and I provide the path to the duck. And then I provide a handler for the loaded object. So 
so now I can get the duck3d object of the gltf object. Just create a variable, type any gltf scene children and zero. Then I say the duck position on the z axis. So this is the z axis. I say it is the position 6 and then I say this scene add duck and as you see now I have loaded the 3D duck object and with the physics debug mode you see it does not have a physics body it does not have a red mesh around it so let's verify that by creating a box behind the duck and then applying a force to push against the duck. It is a box two. This physics add box. And it is in the position x minus 10, z6. And then I say box body apply force on the x axis with 15. And you see the box is sliding right through the duck. Just on a side note, there is a variety of different physical body shapes. For example, you can add a simple box shape. Or you can add a compound shape, which is made of several simple shapes, like a sphere and boxes. Or you can add complex meshes as physical body. The more complex, the more costlier they are. So let us add a physical body to the duck. We can do this by saying this physics add existing because I am adding an already existing object. I say I add the duck and here I can provide parameters to the physical body shape. I can say the shape must be of type convex. So let's save that and see how it looks like. And as you see, the duck now has a physical body of type mesh and the box is pushing the duck. Maybe the convex physical body is a little bit too complex and too costly. I would like to have it a simple box shape. For that let me create a wrapper 3D object for the duck. I just do that with... It is a new extended object. And for the object, I add the duck as a child. Then I change the position of the object instead of the duck. And in the scene, I add the object instead of the duck. And to the physics manager, I add the object. And then I can change the shape to the box. And I set the size of the box to 2. Width is 2. Height is 2. And death is 2. And now you see the duck is within a box. Unfortunately, it seems the duck is sitting on the origin of the box. We need to move the duck downwards a little bit. I can do that by saying the position of the duck on the y axis, it must be minus 1. And now the duck is sitting on the ground of the box. And also you can create compound physical bodies. Here I have created a group. And I have added several boxes to the group. Then I have added the group to the physics. The result is that all the boxes within the group are a physical unity. And that's it. Let me know in the comments if you like that kind of videos. Thanks and goodbye.